There's a bunch of Wes Anderson shorts on Netflix. Did you know this? We did not know this. Okay, so we knew there was going to be at least one, the wonderful yes. story of Henry Sugar, which premiered at Venice, which is, Alonzo, where you saw it. Yeah, I did. We knew there was that one. And then one of our viewers was like, are you going to review all the Wes Anderson shorts <laughs> on Netflix? And I'm like, all of There's them? What do, you, what do you mean all of them? So there are four, um, and they came out – what? Wednesday, Day, Thursday, Thursday, today, Friday, and there's and tomorrow. one tomorrow. We're going to talk yeah. about a few of them here. Um, and uh, the ones I saw, I liked a lot. Alonzo, why don't you tell <laughs> us about, at least, tell us about Henry Sugar, at least. This could change my life. An extraordinary thing happened. All at once, he sees through his own skin. Like an x-ray, only better, he sees everything. The Wonderful World of Henry Sugar. Uh, these are all based on the, the short stories of Roald Dahl. And of course, Wes Anderson has been here before with Fantastic Mr. Fox. Uh, the Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar features Ray Fiennes as Roald Dahl, sort of in his writing hut in his estate in England. And um, it is a story uh, about a man played by Benedict Cumberbatch, who is rich and kind of useless and a bit of a layabout. And he's weekending at someone's estate and he's looking in the library and he picks up this notebook and he reads about a man in India played by Ben Kingsley, who uh, has the ability to see without using his eyes. And among the many things that this guy can do um, is to uh, read playing cards from behind. And so, of course, you know, you can obviously break the bank of the casino if you play your cards right. Uh, uh -huh. um, <laughs> so Henry Sugar devotes himself to learning the practices of this guy and figuring out how to do what it is he does. The notebook, by the way, is written by a doctor who's played by Dev Patel. And there's another doctor played by Richard Ayuade. And so eventually Henry Sugar, like, can read through cards and he goes to the casino and makes a lot of money and he's immediately bored by the whole thing mm -hmm. but then he realizes that he can do a lot of good with this so he basically becomes a, a, a new and reformed person uh by you know embracing charity and using this skill that he's developed for good for the first time um I've seen three of the four of these now, and what's great about them is that they are just yarns, you know, like there's just these stories. You don't know where they're going exactly, but they're just constantly, you know, Roald Dahl's language is so rich, the way he describes things and the way that people describe other people or describe incidents. And then you've got like that Wes Anderson thing where everything is like incredibly stylized. There's a real sense of stagecraft here. Like mm -hmm. a lot of the effects are like beyond practical they're they're literally stage trickery like right. there's a it's part like intentional artificiality exactly yeah. like there's a part <laughs> where benedict cumberbatch you've probably seen this on the poster it looks like he's sort of meditating and floating in air but he's actually just on a box that is painted <laughs> exactly like the backdrop behind him so it looks like he's floating so you know you know, like in some of the other shorts like in the swan and in the rat catcher like stage hands are actually visible and handing props to the actors, you know. And um, adding and taking off costumes and things. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a whole segment in 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 uh, in Henry Sugar where where Ben Kingsley's hair and makeup is being completely transformed it's in fun. the process of doing the film. There's a lot of staring at the camera in a like punctuating kind of way. Mm -hmm. So if you love Wes Anderson, you will really love these films. And if you don't, these are not the, going to be the ones that win you over because they are as Wes Anderson as all get out. I disagree. I think this is the just the right bite-sized amount of Wes Anderson. Like, if you don't think you like him, here is not too much of him. Here is like a little <laughs> amuse-bouche of his style. <laughs> I kind of feel like shorts are an excellent use of his, his style, his voice, because they are so jam-packed. Right. There's so much going on that like you get so much out of the density of them. I so appreciate the playfulness at work here and the fact that all these actors are playing different roles in different films. Right? They're all doing kind of different things for each other and also often playing different roles within the same film. So right. at one point, Ben Kingsley is the card dealer at the casino <laughs> while also having been... What the guy who can see through everything in the rat catcher, mm -hmm. um, Rupert Friend, who also features uh -huh. in The Swan, goes from being the owner of a petrol station to a rat, but he's just sort of standing there <laughs> facing off with Ben Kingsley. That one also includes stop motion animation of a rat. Oh, fun. Uh, and so it's, you know, that the, 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 he's just Anderson is just unloading all kinds of tricks out of his bag. I was impressed too with 
how these actors make this look so effortless and it is so technically precise and demanding. The language is so hard because they're having to deliver it all in like a rapid fire kind of deadpan, which is quite frequently what we see from Wes Anderson's actors. There's yeah. a lot of that in Asteroid City, for example, of like rattling off technical jargon, whatever. The thing with Rupert Friend in The Swan, a whole big section of it in the beginning takes place in this like hedge maze, like a corridor yeah, of like hay hedgerow. on both sides. And he's <laughs> like talking straight to the camera and then he's walking away from the camera and like looking over his shoulder while <laughs> talking to you and having to still maintain perfect eye contact with the camera while he is walking backward. <laughs> Actually, he's walking forward, looking backward. Yes. And the, the language is a huge, long monologue. The language is so dense. Plus, he's not just doing his own voice. He's also doing this, but the other characters, he said. <laughs> and Because they're all reading, they're reading Roald Dahl's words. Yes. Yes, right? these, these are, are like incredibly scripts. faithful adaptations. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was so impressed with how smooth and seamless all this seems when you know that so much meticulous work went into every little detail, like backdrops come and go behind people, like Benedict Cumberbatch, like walk through one gate and then like step happens behind him mm. and just the timing of it all is, is so precise and like all the little wallpaper and all the little <laughs> the Wes Anderson-y kind of like tchotchkes on the tables and totally is I think it's if you love him you're going to be in heaven with these but if you don't love him this is like a 34 minute or 17 minute long sure. little nugget to like dip in and enjoy it so you have seen three of the four which is your yeah. favorite I mean probably Probably Henry Sugar, but they're all terrific. I've enjoyed all of them. And and I could see there is a time in history where this would have been released as like an anthology film. Mm -hmm. You know, would have been yeah. called like, you know, Tales of Roald Dahl or whatever. And that and the, the, you'd had like Ray Fiennes sort of as the as the bridging material as Roald Dahl. But he also plays the rat catcher, by the way. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of putting all this stuff together. But instead, they're dropping them as these four different little Netflix shorts. So you could watch them back to back to back and just pretend it's a new Wes Anderson feature. <laughs> but as you say, yeah, if you just if a little goes a long way, here's a little, you know, Um I'm so, surprised yeah, that I, you like Henry Sugar so much because I think you didn't love Asteroid City the way I did. And part of what you didn't love about it was like the Russian, Russian nesting doll structure of it, I which Henry to say, Sugar totally has. Absolutely. And I have to say, <laughs> I, I went back and watched Asteroid City again because Dave and I were reviewing it on a KCRW and I liked it better the second time ah. because the first time I watched it, I thought it was a movie about Asteroid City. But the second time I watched it, I realized it's a movie about the theater. And about so storytelling, yes. I think, yeah, so I think that Asteroid City and and these doll shorts tie in together really well because they're so much about absolute artifice. I mean, like you could look at any Wes Anderson movie and obviously it's art directed to a fairly well, but mm -hmm. here he is genuinely being like, this is fake. This is artificial. Here comes a stagehand to hand a prop to the actor. <laughs> that is how theatrical we're doing it here, you know? But ultimately, I think the story he is trying to tell through that intentional artifice is meant to be heartwarming oh, absolutely there's a lesson to be learned there yeah it's a, it's a parable about a life changed and a heart changed but not in a cheesy way yeah no no no. and i don't mean to yeah. say that these are lacking in emotion or yeah. that they're that they're purely operating on a level of artifice i'm just saying that he's choosing artifice as his medium basically it's an interesting but yeah, contrast yeah. exactly but the stories still very much land they all have a moral and they all have real meaning to them and real genuine emotion even though the presentation is so arch for kids who have never read any Roald Dahl this will be a good introduction for adults who've never read any Roald Dahl like you know he's got he he, he contains multitudes and yeah I think I think maybe you're right that that even people who don't like Wes Anderson maybe will like 17 minutes worth of Wes Anderson <laughs> I think Netflix is doing a horrible job of marketing these yes, movies they are let's talk about that because I saw Henry <laughs> Sugar at Venice and mm -hmm. I had press notes from Netflix and all this stuff and I wrote about it not a peep about the other three mm -hmm. we literally had no idea until somebody on instagram asked christy if we were reviewing these i was like what other ones <laughs> so netflix you're dropping the ball here like I, I i mean you don't you even have to sort of scroll down to find the other ones like the henry sugar is very much like presented on the on the home page but you have to go all the way down to the world of roll doll to find the links to the other ones if you don't already know the titles for me, I don't even have Henry Sugar as like on the landing page. Maybe it's because of what Nick watches and that's what dictates what we get. Uh, so could be. maybe he's been watching 
Avatar The Last Airbender lately, so that's what I have. But like, <laughs> I had to do an actual search. I went down level by level by level and then couldn't find it and then typed in Wes Anderson and boom, there they were. So yes. come on, Netflix. You have an auteur in Wes Anderson who's giving you all this fantastic, rich work. Show them yeah. off. Pretend it's a series if that makes it easier for you, you know, <laughs> and have one grouping page and list them as episodes, whatever yeah. it takes. But come on, do better. Yeah. I don't want to give me any numbers. Let's just say like they're good. <laughs> sure. I, I, I gave it a 92 out of 100 for Henry Sugar for my Venice review uh, for Metacritic. But yeah, these are the, the three that I've seen are great. I'm very excited for number four to drop tomorrow. I'll be watching that too. Let us know if you're going to do it too.